He was Wisconsin's first scientist. He was a cartographer, a writer, a botanist, an archaeologist, a zoologist, a geologist, a naturalist, a meteorologist, and is considered the father of the National Weather Service. He was an influential leader in so many different disciplines. He left a lasting legacy on all of them. His name was Increase Lapham. Increase Allen Lapham was born to a family of Quakers in Palmyra, New York on March 7, 1811. And only 13, he was employed to work on the Erie Canal, first just cutting stone, and then as a rodman, or the person who holds out a stick while surveying. He saw fossils and rock formations that had been dug up during the excavating, and it was there that he began to develop and improve his geology skills. Lapham was a very smart man, yet he had almost no formal education. As a young man, he was not a good speller, but had the confidence to write and share ideas. He was taught by his parents and also learned from his experiences while working on the canal. When Lapham was 16 years old, he wrote his first scientific paper for Silliman's journal titled A Notice of the Louisville and Shippingport Canal and of the Geology of the Vicinity. This was just the start of the hundreds of books and articles he would eventually write during his lifetime. In 1836, Lapham moved to Milwaukee, Wisconsin when he was offered a job as Byron Kilborn's business agent to help build a canal on the Milwaukee and Rock Rivers. Kilborn was one of the founders of the city. He knew Lapham from canal work in Ohio and that Lapham was one of the best canal surveyors and engineers. The canal was never built. Lapham was appointed deputy surveyor for the Wisconsin Territory. He published the first maps of Milwaukee and the surrounding areas, and he authored the first commercially published book in Wisconsin, A Geographical and Topographical Description of Wisconsin, which was immensely popular among settlers and immigrants as a tool to adjust to Wisconsin life. During his survey work, Lapham worried about progress destroying Indian mounds. He then published The Antiquities of Wisconsin. It contained many maps of the mounds. Since then, 90% of them have been demolished. Lapham is also noted for his study of the ancient Mississippian city of Astalan in Wisconsin. Lapham was able to document many parts of Astalan that were later lost to destruction by farming. The Astalan site is now a state park. His detailed records continue to help archaeologists to this day. His expertise was often crucial in differing between mounds and natural geologic formations. His daughter Mary became an archaeologist following his legacy. Lapham was also fearless. At one point during his study, he descended into a well by a rope to record the soil and bedrock. In addition to geology and archaeology, Lapham's interest in and concern with weather on and around the Great Lakes grew. In 1868, overall, storms damaged 1,164 vessels, killing 321 sailors. Lapham sent newspaper clippings and these details to Milwaukee Congressman General Herbert Payne, along with letters. Because back in that day, uh, one of the biggest things uh, outside of war, one of the biggest things was commerce and all these ships traversing the seas and uh, Great Lakes and things like that. Um, without any kind of the stuff we have today, without the satellites, without the radar remotely sensed technology, in a lot of ways, without observations, uh, sea captains were flying, you know, they were going blind. They were going across the ocean not knowing if there was going to be a huge storm, not knowing what was going to go on outside of a day or two. So uh, uh, those types of observations were, were very useful. He asked in one letter if it were not the duty of the government to see whether anything could be done to prevent at least some portion of the sad loss in the future. His ideas soon caught on and were supported. At that time, it was already known that weather in the United States generally moved from the west to east. Lapham had a friend in Dubuque, Iowa, who could take weather observations for him and telegraph them to Milwaukee. They discovered that when a storm went through Dubuque, it would arrive in Milwaukee about six to eight hours later. This gave Lapham enough time to warn mariners of approaching storms. General Payne introduced a joint congressional resolution requiring the Secretary of War to take weather observations and telegraph them to warn of approaching storms. The resolution became law when it was signed by President Ulysses S. Grant on February 9, 1870. 
Well, the National Weather Service is something that's very beneficial to all of us here in the U.S. We do a lot of different things. Uh, not only do we provide uh, forecasts uh, for uh, the public, for aviation, for marine interests and things like that, we also operate the infrastructure uh, that a lot of these things come through. Knowing the National Weather Service, uh, we have satellites up in the air, we have uh, uh, radar jointly with the FAA to detect things like tornadoes and severe thunderstorms. Um, and in particular, probably one of the biggest things that's of importance is the uh, protection of life and property through issuing things such as watches and warnings. Starting on November 1st, 1870, the Secretary of War started collecting weather data. Then, on November 8th, Increased Lapham gave the first national weather forecast. Today, the National Weather Service Increased Lapham Envisioned does far more than just help with storms on the Great Lakes. In 1970, the National Weather Service became a branch of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. NOAA does everything from mapping the depths of the ocean, to analyzing meteorological data to simulate climate change, to provide predictions for the future. NOAA climatologists use Lapham's data to get a better understanding of temperature and weather trends over a long period of time. Increase Lapham was also an environmentalist whose ideas preceded environmental leaders like Aldo Leopold and John Muir by almost half a century. Around 1858, he wrote The Forest Trees of Wisconsin, where he warned that Wisconsin's natural resources and history were not limitless, and were being lost to the short-sighted needs and greed. After a decade of work, he became the chair of a special forestry commission to study Wisconsin's forest and make recommendations for government action. The result was his report titled, on the disastrous effects of the destruction of forest trees now going on so rapidly in the state of Wisconsin. On January 30, 1849, Lapham, along with 32 other Wisconsin citizens, founded the Wisconsin Historical Society. He served as president of it for 10 years. This is the reason why so many of Lapham's documents are still in existence today. He kept anything that he wrote on scientifically, and it was all given to the Historical Society when he died. His daughter Julia followed his legacy by becoming president of the Waukesha County Historical Society. On September 14, 1875, after Lapham was satisfied with a paper he was writing, he stepped into his rowboat and pushed off into what had been the subject of his article, Oconomowoc Lake. At dusk when he hadn't returned, he was found dead at the bottom of the boat. It is believed that he died from heart disease. Lapham was buried in the same cemetery that he had personally designed and landscaped, Forest Home Cemetery in Milwaukee. Lapham made many contributions to the state of Wisconsin, the Great Lakes region, and the nation. It seemed appropriate to honor his legacy. It was then decided to name this hill the highest point in Waukesha County, then known as Government Hill, in Lapham's honor. In 1939, Lapham Peak State Park was born. This dedication was appropriate because not only did Increase Lapham take some of his weather observations from this hill, but this is also a cane. Now a cane is a geological formation that happens when a glacier retreats, leaving behind a hill of sediment. Towards the end of his life, Lapham supported leading scientist and naturalist Louis Agassiz's theory of continental glaciation and wrote about it as an explanation to Wisconsin's unique geology. Lapham corresponded with Agassiz and shared specimens of plants, animals, fossils, and rocks. Here at the base of the observation tower, there's a plaque in Increase Lapham's name that describes him as being an eminent scientist and a useful citizen. Lapham would eventually have an elementary school, a main Milwaukee street, and a hall at the University of Wisconsin named in his honor. Increase Lapham was a confident leader who led not by force, but through sharing his great scientific work with others. His greatest achievement was helping to create an administration that has saved thousands of lives, the National Weather Service. <laughs>